future. And I'm going to talk to you today about some facts you should know from the Southern Poverty Law Center. Um, let me just show you a chart first about single bias hate crime murders in the United States. And watch them go. Okay. This was the level of number of hate crimes in uh, 2008. And it kind of went down for a little bit. And then it started going up, up, and up. So we're facing a time of white nationalism being out of control. Um, let me give you some facts and information about that. Uh, hate crimes are on the rise, all right? Reported hate crimes across America rose by 3% in 2019 to 7,314, and it didn't get better last year. There were 51 hate crime murders that year. That was the most recorded since the FBI began collecting this data in 1991, and more than double the 24 recorded last year, previously the highest documented figure. I mean, that last year, of course, was uh, uh, 2018. Like every year, race-based hate crimes were the most numerous. The vast majority directed at black people. Do you hear that? The vast majority. And uh, there's more Hispanics than blacks in the United States, for example. But anti-Hispanic hate crimes increased for the fourth straight year to 527, a 9% increase in the highest since 2010. Uh, of course, we did get rid of Trump, but these are the facts. Reported crimes directed against Jews and Jewish institutions increased 14%, the highest figure since 2008. Hate crimes against LGBTQ people also went up, including an 8% increase in crimes against the transgender community, the highest since the FBI began collecting the specific, this specific data in 2013. Um, White nationalist violence is certainly on the rise. Ten years ago, white supremacists were responsible for seven deaths and 21 incidents. Those numbers climbed steadily during the decade, and by, by 2019, white supremacists were linked to 165 deaths and 336 incidents. Okay, let's uh, go over that phrase. White nationalism isn't the same as white supremacy. White supremacy permeates American lives. It's in every corner where we live and breathe, uh, leading each of us to traumatizing acts of big and small nature. It's one of the foundations of our government here in the United States. Hence the need to realign our legal system now and other institutions that harm black and brown people. Uh, white nationalism is a weaponized form of supremacy with clear intent on the eradication of all non-whites, not the oppression, the eradication. Um, so understand white supremacy is the structure of the America by our founding fathers. But you can help prevent radicalization by staying alert to the kinds of vulnerabilities that make people susceptible to extremist rhetoric. One, anger and betrayal. When people feel something has unjustly been taken from them, they may turn to extremists for easy answers and a scapegoat to blame. Even justified grievances can often um, offer extremists an open door to radicalize and recruit. Extremism uses conspiracy theories about the origins of COVID-19 to direct that anger and sense of betrayal towards others, for example including minority groups and organizations involved in relief efforts currently. And number two, rebellion and status. When adolescents rebel with hateful content, they can cause real damage. Some former extremists report that their radicalization began, began with sharing edgy or shocking material as a joke. Um, a way to shock authority figures, for example, or a way to impress their peers. Number three, desire for love and friendship. Strange as it sounds, many extremists embrace hate, hoping it will bring them closer with someone they love. Sometimes it is easier to embrace extremism than to reject a loved one and their beliefs. 
I think about my family down in southwestern Missouri. When a, a loved one is radicalized, it puts everyone around them at risk. Trauma, disruption, and lost. Lots. Sudden, unwanted changes to our everyday lives can leave people feeling powerless, which makes them more vulnerable to radicalization. So we are in the midst of a pandemic, economic trouble, and we have to be active, fighting, and uh, doing what needs to be done to help people with trauma and disruption and loss in their lives. Extremists offer a false sense of security and the promise of belonging much like, um, well, I won't get into that. Number five, confusion and uncertainty. Extremists offer simple false solutions to complex problems while conspiracy theories offer a sense of control when we feel otherwise powerless. Well, I've been praying. I've got people in my own church I'm praying for that their hearts and souls get changed. But there's other ways you can be attentive to what you hear in the media, what you read on social media. Um, you can keep up to date by uh, following sites like uh, um, Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, here's a list of pat platforms you can join anti-racist, anti-white uh, supremacist groups um, around the United States and the world. Okay, and if you see any on them, please notify them that somebody's using hate speech, uh, trying to recruit uh, young people, uh, trying to recruit old people. All right, remember this, these are the issues that uh, are fa we are facing today as never before. Uh, it calls for help and hope. Remember we can uh, reach out to people who f are angered and feeling betrayed by what the country has had to offer. For example, we haven't had any major increase in our wages in America for 50 years. So something economically and structurally needs to be changed. And if people find the system just not working for them, they feel betrayed and angered and want to blame somebody. So watch out for that, think about it and help people. Number two, uh, if you know somebody just uh, promoting white supremacy to gain status or uh, just out of a sense of youthful rebellion. That's what uh, Trump played off a lot with young people, offering them some status as, uh, you know, as a Hitler youth did in Germany. Um, number three, uh, these people do desire love and friendship. They're often just finding it in the wrong way. Uh, so make sure you love people and see that the loved ones you know aren't radicalized. Um, recognize that our country is filled with trauma, disruptions, and loss even before COVID came. All right, this is not a new thing, but it's snowballed, especially under the Trump administration and the previous administrations that continued to allow uh, such a stretch between the wealthiest and the poorest in our country. Um, number five, uh, again, is the con confusion and uncertainty. People are confused and they're uncertain and they're lashing out for something. It's often because we've been poorly educated and uh, we aren't offered by the parties much choice. Uh, right now, the Republicans are swimming in Trump and they just don't know how to get out of it. So uh, if that's the only choice for some people, and they say that's the conservative party. No, a conservative party would do things like uh, trying to create stability, not tear us apart, but that's what they play on. Uh, so we hope that you consider uh, getting active in 2021 and uh, working over the next few years to see that you're a part of the country, whether you're conservative or liberal, are fighting these uh, radicalization moves and don't fall into that thing uh, to a belief that Antifa is behind every corner. I, a lot of these guys who uh, attacked the Capitol, walked into Campbell, destroyed things, and maybe even killed people, um, a lot of them are saying, no, we, we were not among Antifa. We were told they were there, but 
We weren't among them. No, we didn't see them. They were not the ones who tore this the capital down. We did it. We did it in our name, in our president's name. That's it. So don't believe all the bad stuff about Antifa. There are some things, but there's no such organization as Antifa. It's no more than an ideology or a uh, coming together on certain events. Uh, so it's like punching the wind. So let's focus on real things. There are Trump organizations out there that promote, uh, you know, groupings of people who have right wing, uh, excuse me, not right wing, uh, white supremacist tendencies and they're destroying our country. Let's work together. Make America better. Thank you for listening to me, Kevin Stoda, on my porch here in Kansas City, Missouri. And I hope you enjoy this channel, pass it on, become a member, and um, we'll change the world for the better. Okay? Or you will. And I'll help you.